Hey everyone, this is Kenji Lopez all for Serious Seats in the Food Lab, and today I'm making katsu. This is classic, classic Japanese comfort food. The word comes from the Japanese pronunciation of cutlet, katsuretsu, shortened down to the word katsu. If you add ton to the front of it, that means pork, you end up with pork cutlets. Today we're making chicken katsu, which is basically the same thing, just with chicken instead of pork. You could also use beef, some people do it with ham, some people do it with ground beef, you could use tofu or seitan, really any kind of protein that you like. The key is using panko breadcrumbs, which come out extra crispy. Here's how we do it. Start with chicken breasts that are split and pounded into quarter inch cutlets. You can do this yourself following our guide or ask the butcher to do it for you. Season the chicken generously with salt and pepper. For best results, set it aside in the fridge and let it rest for a few hours. This breaks down muscle protein, which leads to better juice retention during cooking. Salted and rested chicken comes out significantly juicier than plain chicken. Next, set up a dredging station by setting three shallow plates or bowls on a work surface. Add a cup of flour to one, three beaten eggs to the second, and a cup and a half of panko-style breadcrumbs to the third. Working with one cutlet at a time, dredge your chicken in the flour using your first hand, which we'll call the dry hand. Transfer the chicken to the egg wash, and then using your wet hand, flip it and turn it to coat it. Lift the chicken using your wet hand, let the excess egg drip off, then transfer to the panko. Now use your dry hand to scoop the breadcrumbs over the chicken, pressing down on them so that they adhere firmly. Flip the chicken and press a few more times until a nice thick coat of breadcrumbs has built up. Set the cutlet aside and repeat with the rest of them. If all went well, using the dry wet system should prevent you from breading your fingers. When you're ready to fry, add about a third of an inch of vegetable, canola, or peanut oil in a cast iron or stainless steel skillet, then heat it up to around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Use a thermometer for this. Gently lay the cutlets into the oil, lowering them away from you to protect yourself just in case you accidentally splash the oil. Only lay down as many cutlets as will comfortably fit in a single layer. Now cook them, swirling the pan and adjusting the heat to maintain a temperature of around 300 to 325 degrees. The chicken should stay at a steady, vigorous bubble the whole time. Cook them until the first side is set, which will take about a minute and a half. Then flip the cutlets and cook until the second side is set. It's about a minute and a half longer. Continue cooking, flipping the cutlets occasionally and swirling the pan until they're golden brown and crisp on both sides. Then transfer the chicken to a paper towel lined plate to drain and season them immediately with a little bit more salt. Keep the cutlets in a warm oven while you fry the rest. And by the way, don't be tempted to skip the coating of flour when dredging. Like primer under a coat of paint, the flour helps the egg and breadcrumbs adhere more evenly to the chicken, which gives you more evenly crisp and brown end results. The more you know! Once all the chicken is fried, use a sharp knife to cut it into thin strips to make it easy to pick up with chopsticks. Serve the katsu with finely shredded cabbage, a wedge of lemon, and plenty of tonkatsu sauce. You can find a recipe on Serious Eats for the sauce, or just buy the sauce at any Asian market. Itadakimasu!